Hello everybody! Uh, welcome to the virtual event series. Um, I'm Angelo. I'm a senior reactive media specialist here uh, at Netgear. Um, just to introduce myself, I uh, manage the YouTube channel, the uh, the Night Harper Gaming Twitch channel, um, and really if you follow any of our social accounts on Instagram or Facebook or Twitter, um, there's probably a chance I've had my hand on it at some point of that process. Um, Right before I introduce the uh, virtual event series and what we're going to talk about today, I'm actually going to hand it off to John, our ProAV uh, marketing manager. Thanks, Angelo. Happy to be here again and uh, welcome everybody to this YouTube live event. It's like we're at a trade show, but we're not. I'm still in my house. You're in yours, I'm sure. Uh, I'm the ProAV product marketing manager and uh, I handle the Netgear commitment to the ProAV channel. So that's my background. I'm an AV guy here at a network company. Off to our other guy, Alex. Hi. Hey, everybody. Thanks for having me. Uh, my name is Alex Pendleton. I'm a senior systems engineer on the Pro AV design team here at Netgear. Awesome. Well, I'm glad to have you guys uh, on the show, and John especially, uh, thank you for coming on again. I know we've had a couple uh, uh, cool events that we've done in the past, but just to kick things off, this is the Netgear virtual event series. Um, so, this is a virtual event. This is a virtual trade show. We're trying to bring the hustle and bustle of the trade show experience right to your screen, no admission cost, pretty much watch us every Tuesday at 12 o'clock. And um, we want to be able to be there for you to give you interactive demos. Um, we're going to bring different guests on every week. Um, so we're really going to start taking a deep dive into the products um, today. So today we're talking about Pro AV and the switches that uh, power a lot of these professional audiovisual um, deployments. Um, so I've been your host for these uh, these events in the last couple of months. I'm kind of the jack of all trades guy. So uh, John and Alex, if you wouldn't mind, what is Pro AV and um, what exactly are we going to be talking about today? Yeah, so we'll talk about some of that and we'll show you some examples of that coming up as well. But in general, it's uh, really simple where you normally have an HDMI cable plugged into your TV or a TV in a shopping mall for digital signage or something. It's now over an Ethernet cable. So they're taking audio and video, packetizing that into network-based video signals and audio signals and control, things like that, over a standard network switch. So Netgear, being a networking company, has found that people were using their switches in this capacity and has uh, hired people like myself and Alex and got them involved in the Pro AV market. So that's uh, AV over IP. And we have a little video to show you a little bit more about that, I think. Yeah, cool. Um, so we're going to roll that video. I did want to shout out a couple uh, a couple of you guys in the chat. So Jenny, welcome, and Ricky, hello. So we, uh, wow, those are some new names that I uh, haven't recognized yet. So um, again, this is a live interactive show. Um, you know, this is something, we're all in our homes, but we're all doing this live. So if you have any questions, any comments whatsoever, um, and also this is, this is a trade show, so if you want to get in contact with us, uh, we'd be happy to uh, partner up with you guys and learn more about you know what you're interested in, how we could help you out, especially in the uh, in the pro AV world. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, actually roll that clip. Um, I think it's uh, something that we put together in the last few months. So let's check it. AV over IP is a fast-growing market, primarily because of the advantages offered over traditional AV matrix switching. With AV over IP, creating networks is faster and easier. Infrastructure can be shared and costs are reduced. The future is here and the message is loud and clear. Discover what Netgear M4300 switches can do for you. A Netgear AV over IP switch allows for the creating of fast, dynamic AV streaming and up to 10 gigabit per second throughput with ease. From conference room setups, to corporate video walls, to cutting edge surgery applications, to large scale streaming displays, M4300 switches deliver amazing HDR video for any application. For day to day small installations, M4300s are totally pre-configured for zero touch deployments. For larger installations, the configuration is greatly simplified with automatic AV multicast. And the Netgear Pro AV Engineering Services team is here to help design and install any type of AV over IP projects. It's that easy, no hassle, just high quality visuals. Plus, with Netgear's 24-7 expert support, 
and limited lifetime warranty for total peace of mind, you can trust that your video experience will deliver as expected. Learn more about the future of streaming high quality video. All right, Rec. Awesome. Um, so we're gonna take a deep dive into exactly the Netgear switches that power these AV deployments. So uh, we got a lot of really cool stuff for you guys today. Um, and also we have um, a demo reel that I, we actually shot a few months ago um, where, again, we want to really show off that experience of, let's say, especially during the summer, you know, unfortunately we're not able to do these uh, conventions and trade shows, but we want you to feel like you're coming up to the booth. You you have questions um, that you might want to ask. We're gonna we're gonna uh, pretty much really tell you everything um, about the hardware that powers these Pro AV systems. Um, but again, we want to hear from you. We're gonna keep it interactive. Uh, shout out Derek Falberg. He is in the chat. He is our um, he's our sales engineer. Uh, who's actually been in a couple of the shows in the past. So if you want to tap his expertise, um, please, please drop a comment. Um, I did want to shout out a couple more. Um, I got, we got Luis. Uh, hello from Brazil. Uh, we're all the way across the world. We even in pretty much every one of these events, it's really cool to, see, uh, to hear where you guys are coming from. Um, and Jenny, it's awesome to hear that you are uh, checking this out for the first time. So if you're interested in AV, oh. it's perfect. Awesome, welcome. Um, so let's do, I'm thinking, let's do a little uh, introduction to exactly what are the switches that we offer that are engineered for Pro AV. Yeah, and Alex will be going into details on this stuff. We can go as deep as you want. That's why we always have a tech guy with us and Alex is the guy on the phone if you need some support sometimes with Pro AV stuff, he's on the email, so he knows everything. We'll go deeper dive on some of that. He'll take us to a case study later on too that he's worked on and show you actual system design. Uh, I'm the marketing guy, so I'm going to talk a lot uh, and uh, we'll let Alex pipe in there for, for stuff here and there for sure. But first of all, what are our switches? We have a ton of switches. Our M4300 and M4500 are the model series that really speak to Pro AV. Um, the modular switches, we'll show you some of that stuff coming up. They offer a lot of flexibility uh, for 10G, the high bandwidth uh, type of AV over IP installations. A lot of different models to choose from. If you need fiber, you need copper, you need those mixed in the same chassis, we can do all that stuff. The 4500, Alex, is 100, 100G, right? Yeah, it's the 100. So actually, Netgear's first 100 gig switch, um, but it's also backwards compatible with the other uh, uh, QSFP compliant items such as 40 gig, 25 gig. Um, really also shows versatility just like the M4300s. So we'll show you some more about that too. We have a video on that one as well, but I don't want to delay too much uh, of the uh, the great job that our team did for the virtual event demo thing. So maybe we can take a look at that, Angelo, and show people what we're doing for our booth, our virtual booth here from what was Infocom. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. So uh, we're going to go ahead and roll that clip. Um, but just to kick things off, yeah, welcome to the virtual event series to anyone who's uh, new in the chat and uh, welcome to our booth. Let's do it. Ow. Hello and welcome to the next year booth here at Infocom 2020 in beautiful Las Vegas. Sorry, old habits. Well, welcome to our virtual event series. We're so glad you're able to join us. I'm John Henkel, the Pro AV Product Marketing Manager here at Netgear. We'd like to give you a tour of the fantastic networking solutions that Netgear offers the professional AV market. Now, Netgear is a recognized name in the consumer side, but it's also been a quiet leader in business networking for many years, with products designed for AV over IP installations as well as the most PoE switches by any manufacturer. So, what are we showing you here today? We have a great AV over IP setup, beginning with our M4300 and M4500 switches, which offer speeds of up to 100 gigabits per second. With a network switch at the heart of these setups, Netgear has many partners to choose from when it comes to encoders and decoders. Now, on the input side here, we have a really cool DVI gear HDMI encoder card that plugs directly into our M4300 96x switch. Now, a similar card is also available from ZV. This allows you to forego a separate encoder box with power supply and cabling and simply plug your HDMI source directly into the network switch. This saves you installation time, complexity, and money, eliminating a possible point of failure too. 
and then routing out the system, we have several digital signage players plugged into ZV encoders as well. For the decoder side of the system, we're simply running four ZV decoders for the video wall you see behind me. What makes this setup so special, you ask? Let's take a look. First of all, Netgear enables all of its switches for the Pro AV markets with the ability to handle multicast streams right out of the box. No other setup is required in most installations. This is accomplished by Netgear IGMP Plus, a unique feature not found on any other network switch. This alone saves you a lot of installation and troubleshooting time, allowing you to focus on getting up and running faster. Of course, these switches are powerhouses with the ability to handle a multitude of streams from one gig up to the 10 gig streams we're using here. In addition to its whopping 100 gigabit bandwidth, the M4500 switch we're using as the core switch in this setup eliminates the need for a separate AV over IP control box by allowing you to run the software directly on our network switch. Now that unique feature saves you the hassle and expense of adding a separate controller, which reduces the points of failure and also saves you time and money. Finally, what's not in view here is our Pro AV Engineering Services team. This is a free service to anyone in the Pro AV industry providing both pre and post sale assistance with network design and help during and after installation. And we have a team of AV trained engineers around the world who respond to your request in a couple of hours. Since this team handles AV over IP projects all over, chances are they've seen something like your project before. They offer best practices to ensure your project is properly specified so that at least the network side of things comes off without a hitch. For more information for an upcoming project, please reach out to our Pro AV Design Engineering Services team by sending an email to proavdesign at netgear.com. For more information on Netgear's Pro AV products and unique capabilities, check out netgear.com slash proav. Thank you very much for your time. We're glad you stopped by. Ow. Cool. Uh, we hope you guys enjoy that. Uh, thank you, uh, thank you, John, actually, for um, being on set with us. Um, that's something we filmed a couple months ago, but we did it safely, um, you know, within our office. So uh, kudos to the team who created that video. But we hope you enjoyed our trade show experience. Again, this is the virtual event series. We want to be able to one bring you um, exactly the best content we can in terms of being able to talk about our switches. But again, we want to hear from you guys. So. Um, I wanted to shout out to Jenny. So, uh, Jenny B, I see that you're using uh, ZV today, and um, I'm just going to kind of shout this out to John and Alex. Uh, she's asking, um, do we have a relationship with, uh, with ZV? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you can see from the video you just saw, and Alex is saying, you know, as well, we use their, their products in our own installations. But um, you talk about the SDVOE, Software Defined Video Over Ethernet Alliance, that uh, ZV is a founding member, as is, as is uh, Netgear. So we certainly work together on those 10G applications uh, and we're strong partners and we're always bouncing stuff back and forth through each other and we use the products all the time. So, yes, awesome. yeah, the, the cool thing about Netgear is that we can be a, a partner with all kinds of people. So um, being the network switch and now it's everything's over IP, it's all going to go through a switch. So whether it's 10G SDVOE stuff or some awesome 1G capabilities as well, Crestron, you'll see later on. And, Alex P's uh, case study as well. We work with everybody, so it's great. Um, we have a special relationship with certain companies and ZV's one of those that we like to uh, to tout as well, so yeah. Cool. Um, so again, chat, uh, if, you, if you're new to the show and if you're just coming in, um, this is something where uh, we wanna keep it interactive. We're gonna be going until one o'clock Pacific time. So we have about a 45 minutes left to um, one, go over th everything that we wanna talk about for you today. But we want to hear from you. You know that actually makes the show actually flow a little bit easier if we uh, hear from your comments. Um, speaking of comments, I'm gonna shout out one more before we uh, start introducing right. the N4300, N4500. Uh, we got one from from Long. So they're asking, "Hey guys, the Pro AV Engineering team sounds like a cool resource. Do y'all have any reading materials for network design?" Alex. Mm. Uh, reading materials. Well, we have uh, we have a few designs. We we prefer to go over designs uh, in in a uh, meeting uh, setup to go over the opportunity, what's going to be the requirements, 
um, the type of things that are going to need to be uh, in place for that uh, design. So um, we, we haven't published anything officially. Maybe we'll look to do that before the end of the year. Um, but uh, yeah, our, our goal is to work directly with uh, the consultants, the integrators, the manufacturers out there to come up with with uh, designs that meet the metric because not, not all designs can be cookie cutter and uh, they may need some special attention. Yeah, I think most every one of them, right? They're all kind of unique. And that's the cool thing about AV over IP. It can be as flexible as you want. You're not locked into any certain situation. Right. Like I've talked about on the marketing side, like a design guide sort of thing or something like that. So we're going to add in somewhere. We have a new Pro AV catalog that should be on our website at some place. I don't have that direct link for you. But that includes just the products, not just the M4345, but some other switches that are used often in Pro EV applications. And we added in a couple of case studies. We're going to expand that in the coming months. Uh, we have some new things coming out as well, but uh, we're going to add some, I think, some case studies. And Alex, I'll be hitting you up for some system designs. I think like work through some of that in that Pro EV catalog, and that'll be a good place for that. Working up to maybe a really full-fledged design guide, but right. uh, at, at the moment, that's what we got. We got Alex. Awesome. <laughs> Yeah, thank you, Alex, for uh, for going on the show. I think just to tease a little bit, I think we actually have a, a case study that we're going to be talking about a little later in the show, right? Yep, yep, indeed. Awesome. Um, wanted to shout out one more. Uh, Daniel, uh, thank you for the virtual event. Awesome. Uh, thank you for coming. Um, we want to hear from you guys. Uh, this is something that's going to help us, well, one, keep doing these events every Tuesday. Um, we're all sheltered in place here, but, um, you know, I think this is something that uh, we found that a lot of people have enjoyed, along with our Friday tech support live streams. I'm going to shout that out a little bit later. Um, but today we're going to be talking pro AV. Um, so just Daniel's question here. Uh, does the M4300 series support IGMP plus specifically the 1G models? Yeah, so we'll talk about all, the, all of our switches for pro AV support IGMP plus. Uh, it's a Netgear unique thing. We'll talk about that later on. So. Maybe what we should do is talk about some of the products we do mm -hmm. offer and you'll get some of your questions answered, I think. And then later on, we can take some more questions and chat and make sure we cover stuff we didn't or answer questions we didn't cover. Awesome. So let's, let's, let's go ahead and show them a little bit of the M4300 slide there, Angelo. And yeah. let's we'll see what we got. We have a, a wide range of products. Alex knows every model number, I'm sure, at least in his heart. I am. Heart. <laughs> no, I'm still <laughs> learning all those, too. I just started in October. But we have a wide range. You can see from half rack unit, which are awesome. So you can mount two of them side by side, maybe for some redundancy or different types of switches as well. We have this, um, you know, two RU ch chassis as well. So we have a lot of different switches there, a lot of different speeds. If you go to the next one, we can take a look at that 96X model. Uh, and this is a really special switch that Netgear developed uh, for Pro AV, really, because you can add in all kinds of modules uh, from fiber and copper different ports. SFP, QSFP, whatever kind of style of inputs you need, including what you see there in the breakout are some really cool AV over IP encoder cards. So these are SDVOE compliant uh, from ZV mainly, and also I think DVI gear has another one too, but they let you plug in HDMI cables, inputs directly into the switch. So you can forget about that encoder box and uh, have four on a single mm -hmm. card there, which is really sweet because you can save the power supply, all the cabling, other maybe heating and air conditioning issues, things like that. Uh, just plug right in the switch. Rack so, costs also. And cost, exactly. Costs a lot less uh, depending on who you're buying it from, of course, but uh, having a whole separate box and unit, and often they're just a single encoder box, right? That's so right. here's four in one card. So that's a huge savings. That's a really cool thing. That's on the M4300, that's the 96X switch. Um, trying Ooh. to look for things I missed. Oh yeah, PoE, of course, as well. Yeah, yeah. So, Right, a big thing in uh, Pro AV is being able to power that device, whether it's a security camera, or it's a and maybe a, a phone or whatever is powered by Ethernet. You can now use that from this modular switch or a bunch of other switches that we offer for Pro AV. So PoE is really cool. Sweet. And then you want to go to the next slide real quick. We talk about some of the applications for all this stuff. Um, so it's really everywhere. I mean, people have asked, you know, what's AVO for IP and I forgot who said this, uh, but a colleague had said one time, okay, outside of your house, you have your TVs in your house, right? That's video. You step outside your house, everything else is AV over IP. Um, that's pro AV, really. So from stadiums to um, concerts to um, conference rooms, you know, we won't be attending too many concerts these days or stadiums, but for the baseball players in the stadium, they get to see digital signage and the cameras will still show it. 
Um, certainly education is one that we have talked about a lot uh, in the industry, and that's changing as we all know. Uh, personally, I don't have kids, but uh, I know a lot of people are worrying about going back to school and how they're gonna do that. Uh, and Pro EV can help a lot in that situation. Um, I know I'm just going off of our outline here and just throwing stuff out, but um, mm -hmm. if we go to the next couple of slides here, it seems to time out well for our applications for Pro AV. So we talk about some of the classrooms and traditional classroom, you know, I'm an old guy, so I go back to large classrooms. I don't even know if they're like this anymore. The big lecture halls. I went to Purdue, big Midwest school, 60,000 people or something, right? Huge classrooms like this. You know, I forgot how many people this is. This is a ton of people in one classroom. That's the way it was done. And I think to some degree probably still is a little bit. If you go to the next slide, you start seeing how things are going to change, right? Post COVID, we got to get rid of some of these desks. You can't sit that close to each other. So what do you do in a classroom? Well, if you go to the next slide, then you start seeing how we're going to recover from some of that, right? So we have these overflow rooms or just remote classrooms, satellite classrooms, whatever you want to call them. And each of those are going to be connected with AV over IP. So in your main classroom, you get a camera and the presenter's teacher sharing something on a screen there. All that can be then digitized and sent over AV over IP with your vendor of choice, whether it's, you know, ZV or, or anybody uh, through our network switch to the other classrooms in the same campus. And that can be with fiber connections, right? Can be miles away or a long ways away. And then you can also set up that streamer much like we're doing here right on YouTube. Every university and every classroom is checking out the way to do that right now, just like Angela is doing for us here to broadcast that over the internet for some remote subjects and online students as well. So that's we're starting to see this use case pop up more and more. And I'm sure Alex will start seeing some designs of this coming up. He already has, I think, probably. But um, this is the way it's going to work for the future, I think, for post COVID uh, learning. And this is a good thing because you can have a little more space around you. Uh, each little pod or classroom, I've, I've heard about people talking about educational pods where they put like four students in one little group and they have a display they watch and everything like that. Um, so this is the way that I think we'll see AV over IP working uh, to help facilitate these newer learning situations. That's, that's one of the use cases. Cool. Um, so, yeah. Um... We got, a, we got a couple more comments in the chat, actually, uh, since going through here. Well, one, um, thank you, uh, thank you, John, for putting up this example. I think this is one that really helps visualize exactly what's happening here in real time, um, you know, especially with, uh, with distance learning coming up in the, wow, in just about a couple weeks, actually, I think a lot of kids are going to start kind of figuring out, hey, do we need to go back? What, what, what changes do we need to make? Um, if this is a resource that is helpful to you, um, I think this is something that well, one we could uh, flesh out and kind of provide um, because we got, uh, let's see here, I actually got to go scroll up a little bit. Um, I believe Jaime, he is asking, um, I think we'll be able to deliver that link a little bit later if it's not available yet, but um, he's asking if we could provide the link to the Pro AV catalog. Um, that was one question. And then um, we got a similar one kind of, uh, but from Long. Um, are saying this is up. This is super helpful. Um, I'm on the consulting side, so I'm looking for resources to help give our clients, IT teams, the right networking information for our AV over IP designs. Well, I hope you're in the right place. Oh, well, I can't even see the screen now. Oh, it's down. Okay. <laughs> down there, <laughs> Alex. We got a. <laughs> we got some work for you. Um, well, interesting <laughs> thing about this slide, this post-COVID uh, classroom slide is it, it it's a representation of how education has to make an adaptation to uh what is happening out there uh, but that's not the only place you know medical facilities also are going to have to make this transition and and uh, neck gear being uh it, also a, su a supplier uh to the medical field for av and for it you know uh, it puts us in the prime neck gear in a prime position to support those opportunities as well Mm -hmm. Totally. And we're, we're a member of this uh, alliance called the four number four medical IT Alliance. You can find them on LinkedIn and stuff too, or they have our own website with some other vendors in that space for the software, the hardware, the networking capability, all that together for a great solution to help modernize the operating rooms. But yeah, right. these days, everything's changing across the world. Every industry is being impacted by this. So mm -hmm. right. hopefully by the remoteness of everything, uh, you can find a good solution here at Netgear to help you with those network needs. Mm -hmm. awesome. uh, and one of those, the good segue, is our 4500 switch. 
How about that, Angelo? <laughs> oh yeah. Um, so oh yes, I actually I accidentally flipped to the next slide. That was uh, that was my wrong cue. Man, I messed that one up. But we do have a cool video to show off a of one. We're going to talk about IGMP Plus in a little bit. But we do have a cool sizzle to talk about the M4500, um, which we're, we're going to delve into this. So um, you know what? I'm going to move back to that next slide or the previous slide. There we go. You didn't see anything. Let's uh, let's roll the sizzle. Live, baby. <laughs> we're live. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> let's do it. As networked AV systems become even larger, an all-new class of switches is needed. One that combines the configurability of a matrix switcher with the power and scalability of Ethernet to support hundreds of AV over IP endpoints. Introducing two new Netgear 100 gigabit Ethernet switches. The M4500 series switches are specifically engineered for AV over IP to enable deployments with hundreds of endpoints at a price point that is dramatically cheaper than comparable matrix switchers. These new switches come with Netgear IGMP Plus to greatly simplify system architectures with the same well-known Layer 2 techniques across the entire AV over IP network, removing the need for complicated Layer 3 PIM routing. This is the ideal switch for large deployments, requiring real-time, high-resolution video over IP with zero latency. We're back. Oop, let me move that. Um, Awesome. Well, uh, that, that was a little bit more insight to the the, uh, the Netgear M4500. Um, again, we're going to be taking a little bit of a deep dive into one, the hardware, but also the features you get with it, including that teaser of IGMP Plus, which is also a good segue because uh, we got a question coming in. Um, I'm actually going to address Niket, but then Jaime, you're next. So uh, Niket, uh, you're asking, is IGMP available on standard PoE Plus switches? So yeah, Alex probably knows for sure, since putting some of the catalog together too, you can check on the website and see which ones are or not. We do have plenty of IGMP Plus supported switches or IGMP supported switches. Not all have the Netgear IGMP Plus uh, facilities, but uh, plenty of switches do support IGMP in the smaller range of managed switches and uh, I can't say unmanaged, but the Plus, right? The Smart Plus and things. I'm going to say some. I'm going to say the wrong switch model, so I'm not even going to start giving models. <laughs> the IGMP Plus enhancement, uh, which uh, may be what they're referring to, is only on the M4300 and M4500 uh, switch line. Um, the smart switch lines, uh, Smart Pro and Web Manage uh, uh, smart switches, do not have the enhancement. Um, they do have IGMP snooping. Um, and the, like the courier and things like that, um, but they are um, they're not enabled default out of the box like the M4300s. Um, and the M4300s have have been more over engineered uh, to support the AV uh, over IP world. And I'll just say, you know, we're always working on new things. And while I can't uh, announce anything just yet, Alex and I were just talking about this a second ago. But um, do stay tuned for another event coming up. Uh, we'll, we'll have some more announcements for some of the uh, little smaller switches, other switches that can work for 1G or 10G as well. So mm -hmm. enough said uh, right now, let's talk about IGMP Plus a little bit because that came up already. Um, so it is a Netgear only embodiment of IGMP. So Netgear found that IGMP is great, it works well, but it's really IT centric, let's say. It's a lot of configuration and, and uh, it can take a lot of different keystrokes to get something done, either command line or through the interface. And you have to know what you're doing. Uh, and not that a lot of people don't know what they're doing, but they want to make it easier. So Netgear did that and came up with this Netgear IGMP Plus. It's a combination of things that are set up for you automatically out of the box. So really, and I've tested it myself, when I first started, we're making the claim out of the box functionality. And I took, I used to work for Atlona for a little while. Uh, and uh, I took some of their encoders, decoders, this great OmniStream encoders that are 1G, by the way, and uh, brought them into my desk, turned them on, trying to switch. You had them right behind you as well. The box is right there, <laughs> yep. <laughs> turn them on, turn the switch on, and yes, it did work with no setup. So that's part of that IGMP Plus. We take the hassle out of setting all that up for you with the querier, with snooping and everything else. We do that for you. 
uh, the slide we have on that shows you how one of the other great benefits of that, which uh, was explained to me early on, and I'm a visual guy, I need to create something to, to make it visual for me to make it make sense. So this shows you that often if you just turn on multicasting, you're gonna flood the network, right? And your IT guy is gonna not like you very much. Uh, not to mention all the other people on the network trying to do something. So with IGMP, we make sure only those subscribe streams get through all the way to the top. So, and Alex can explain it in more technical detail. That's my layman's way of saying it. We don't flood the network, right? So you can see only the streams that have a receiver or a subscribe to are gonna go through the entire network. Yeah, um, it's, right. it's okay. our handling of the IGMP report really. Um, the IGMP report isn't shared in, in traditional IGMP networks. As uh, I got to give a shout out to my boss, Laurent Mazia, uh, who's the product line manager for the M4300s uh, and worked with the engineering team to create IGMP Plus. He stated something so profound. It, it probably is how IGMP should have been created to begin with, which I feel 100% that, that way because it allows for us to stay at a layer two flood it, it does not uh, promote uh, that once we add more switches to the network that we need to go to a layer three flood um, and uh, keeps the saturation uh, between the leaf switches and the spine switches free from that congestion that can be caused from other transmitters. And correct me if I'm wrong, Alex, layer two is a little easier to implement and stuff. The commands and things are easier. Absolutely. You want to stay at layer two as long and as, as, uh, as much as possible. Mm -hmm. And you can find all, all the information about layer two, layer three, all the different layers online. There's some really great training, whether you are, uh, want to do SDVOE implementation or not, there's some great training materials on their website, sdvoe.org. And also, I should do a shout out for our own website. What am I doing? So netgear.academy has some great training resources. We have an online course there you can take for free. Just got to sign up, sign in. Uh, and go through all this stuff and you'll learn a whole lot about AV over IP, including IGMP, layer two, layer three, all that stuff. So check that out. Awesome. And just to repeat that one, that was netgear.academy? Yeah. yeah, it's almost too simple. People are like, what, that's it? <laughs> yeah, netgear.academy and you'll get right there. So that's awesome. Cool. Yeah, just uh, we got a couple comments. Um, well, one, asking for resources. So I think that's something we could probably float up at the uh, end of event um, as we kind of start talking about um, uh, some of the landing pages we built out to have some of this information. But just before we uh, don't get too far ahead, um, I did want to address Jaime's um, comment a little bit earlier. So this one is a little bit more in the classroom, though. Um, but uh, Jaime was asking, will AV over IP be, uh, be mostly ST2110? I want to make sure I got that number right. Simpty, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, 2110 is a protocol from the Society of Motion Picture and Television Engineers, Simpty, uh, as opposed to STMP. There's a whole different acronyms. But that is a specific uh, broadcast standard for broadcast video or over IP. Uh, and that requires a heck of a lot of uh, uh, challenges, I guess, and uh, some uh, engineering resources and things. We are certainly looking into it. Obviously, uh, Netgear being an IP company, uh, and into AV over IP, we're looking into that. But as of right now, we can't support that protocol, SMPTE 2110. Mm -hmm. So that's where it is. We are looking at it. We're certainly well aware of it. I come from the broadcast background, so I'm pushing for it. But um, I think there's a fair amount involved in that that we really got to make sure we do it right and uh, get the proper attention on that. And that hasn't happened yet. Cool. All right. Yeah, so stay tuned. You know, again, we want to be able to answer your questions that you know, maybe impossible to answer unless you were at a trade show where, you know, we're directly in contact with us. So, you know, take this as our, um, again, we're, we're streaming from our rooms right to your phones, right to your screens, wherever you are. So uh, we'd love to see these comments. Um, I should probably uh, get a, I should get a breath mint. Speaking of trade shows, <laughs> I'll get my breath mint from my Vegas team that I've saved over the years. Oh, we don't have any swag. We don't have any swag for anyone here on the show. That's the one thing that we're missing. I wish I could just hand out some free t-shirts. That's, that's actually my, one of my favorite parts. <laughs> um, I'm not actually in my bedroom. I'm actually in the new uh, on-site Pro AV lab here in our uh, San Jose headquarters, uh, where we're going to set up a lot of our uh, Pro AV equipment that has been sent to us over the last summer. So, <laughs> so I wish I could be there with you, Alex. That looks like an awesome room. I can't wait for that to get settled in. Yeah, oh, yeah. Thing, as I mentioned earlier, with with Nick, you're talking to all these different vendors. You know, there's a hundred different vendors that we can talk to that'll work with our switches. So we want everything to be in our lab so we can just hook it up and check it out. So yeah, awesome. Um, so we get, we're getting a couple more questions. So I don't know if uh, we want to go a little bit more into um, 
I know we have IGMP Plus that, that this, the animation is going to keep floating around here, but I'm just going to go ahead and uh, address Ed. Um, so he's asking, what redundancy do you offer on these switches? Alex, you can probably speak to that really well. I can answer that. Um, on the M4300 specifically, uh, we have stacking where we can, uh, you know, you, you take a master stack and then you stack another switch with it where that master it manages the, the uh, next switch in the stack um, so that it can be this kind of like uh, merged in independent stack. You have up to eight switches in a stack. Uh, we also have link aggregation or lag. Uh, and you can combine multiple ports uh, as a channel between multiple switches. Um, the M4500s use multi-chassis lag. They do not have stacking. Um, we actually have uh, sites uh, currently around the world that are, are set up with uh, uh, multi-chassis link aggregation uh, as a redundant uh, and non-redundant uh, technique. Um, so, yeah, it, uh, we have a few options there. Mm -hmm. And for redundancy, I always think of power supplies and things like that, too. But so, yes, power supplies, and uh, uh, yeah, definitely. Cool. Um, and then we got a, a follow-up question from the cat. So he's asking, uh, isn't there support slash certifications for AMX AV over IP solution, uh, also known as NMX? I'm not sure if you guys know that one. I know NVX. We're talking about maybe. I know AMX is uh, the uh, Harman SVSI. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I mean, talk about certifications in general. I mean, um, Netgear doesn't offer a certification yet. We've talked about that for the online course, Netgear.academy, that you're certified for AV over IP installations. Um, we have certainly sent our products around to a bunch of different vendors, and on their sites you'll find who we're certified for, like Crestron, like AMX, Harman, all those sort of things. Uh, they usually put that on their website, and often it's behind the partner portal part of their website. But uh, we don't have any other certification uh, process that we uh, provide yet for manufacturers or for individuals, for integrators or installers either. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, I just want to do one more shout out and I think we, we could go ahead and um, continue on with the, uh, with the slides a little bit. Um, but just one shout out, Shady Joker, you are a regular of the show. Thank you for supporting um, the virtual event series and also our tech support streams. Um, it's really great to see some names that we could recognize. And again, we'll shout you out. And, you know, if we recognize you, hey, I don't know, we might bump you up, we might give you a couple perks. So um, thank you again. I, mean, I just want to say thank you for joining. Love that name, Shady Joker. Love it. <laughs> And a lot of people who could fit that that name too. So <laughs> we love it. Um, but awesome. So we were able to kind of take a little bit of a deep dive into IGMP Plus here. Um, yeah. I just wanted to kind of take a look at my notes. Uh, you know, is there You've anything else we wanted to? For a long time. So yeah, yeah. So I think they got enough information on IGMP Plus. Yeah. But you can move ahead. Okay. So I think here I see um, kind of a, an example of um, how our um, switches work in a deployment. Yeah, so this is really talking to the fact that, uh, which I announced in the video, we didn't talk about yet though, what Netgear found was in situations like this where you have all these encoders, decoders coming in for video wall, the standard monitors, whatever, and you always have a controller box. So whenever it's AV over IP, you need something to manage that whole system. You know, what's going to appear in this display? What's going to appear in that display? Or do you have video windows on the video wall? And how are those windows arranged? Things like that. There's always going to be some controller, and that's a separate box, often a Nook or something like that little PC running some software. Why don't we take that software off of there and put it on our switch? So on the M4500 we demonstrated last February at ISE, the last trade show I was at a while ago, um, where we actually ran controller software on the switch itself. So you can, not, you can not have to worry about a whole separate box and power supply and cabling and all that kind of stuff too. Another point of failure in that matter too. So it's all on the switch uh, and you can just manage your network that way. And that's a really slick thing. We're furthering that by uh, offering more of an API coming up for that stuff too, but not ready yet. But we did demonstrate that concept and uh, it's a pretty slick way of operating the system. Awesome. I think as we engineer our switches as we go, uh, we're going to keep that in mind. Um, so, um, you know, our M4300s will will get the API, but the M4500s uh, will have this kind of space to have that kind of management controller. Mm -hmm. It's a Linux-based system, right, Alex, on the 4500? So it's kind of standard in some ways for people to do this sort of stuff. Sure, sure. It, it takes a little bit uh, of know-how initially, but we're working on making that even more sleek. Yeah, this is a great example of Netgear's attention, I think, to listen to their integrators and partners 
and saying, you know, gee, it'd be nice if we could do this. And we're like, hmm, well, okay, we can do that. Let's and do it. And we'll refine it and make it better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, we got one more coming in from, uh, from Daniel um, that I wanted to address. So he's asking, um, so with IGMP Plus, do we only need to calculate the up slash down bandwidth that goes into the spine switch or only the multicast traffic that has to leave the switch? Yes, that's right. IGMP Plus allows for the upstream bandwidth to be calculated. Um, the downstream bandwidth, uh, from a receiver perspective, needs to be calculated as well. Because if you if you have one transmitter and you're coming down to you know ten ten decoders uh, or ten receivers, then you're going to need to have the the bandwidth for that uh, on the receive end. So uh, it it still requires the the encoder upstream and downstream calculation, uh, but it, it prevents the saturation uh, of multiple transmitters on the same on the same leaf switch. Mm -hmm. Awesome, Good one. Yep. And um, just to everyone who was uh, just joining the show, at least in the last half of it. So we are uh, we started at twelve p.m. We uh, this is an hour long show, so. Um, <laughs> yeah. So uh, ask your questions because you guys have about. Uh, 18 minutes. Um, again, we, you know, we still have a lot of great content to uh, show off for you guys today. Um, but again, you know, if you got any more questions, drop them down below. I'm going to do one more. And then after that, we could um, go ahead and proceed. Um, uh, John and Alex. So we got a uh, Dan or sorry, we, we already got Daniel, but Jaime's got a follow up um, saying what AV over IP standards are supported on the 4300 and the 4500. It's kind of simple. Everything. <laughs> You know, it. I know I say everything, and then of course we talked about S S SMPTE 2110. Uh, any 1G or 10G application where it's standard Ethernet, so there's a billion of them um, that will actually operate through the switch as long as it's standard Ethernet. So what that means is HD base T will not work. HD base T doesn't work on any network switch, right? It can't go through a switch because it isn't standard Ethernet protocol. But all the other 1G st uh, standards or 10G standards. Uh, will operate because they're standard Ethernet protocol, and that's where it's pretty simple. So you no. have the encoder on one side, through our switch, back out, it doesn't matter to us. We, we're, the uh, M4300s don't, do not support AVB, however. That's right. So, And we have some more, the news coming up about some more help for that coming up, too. So cool. stay tuned for that. Cool. Got more news coming so, up for you guys. Since Alex has been joining in so much, I realize how important it is to have these design engineers around. Uh, we can talk about that whole program in like the next slide. I know uh, Angelo talks about those services. This is something that coming in, I know from the AV side of things. So I worked for several AV manufacturers before I mentioned at Lona. I worked for RGB Spectrum as well. Uh, and I spent years on broadcast side as well as an operator. So I know that side of things. I didn't know IT at all. So having a team now dedicated to that worldwide, uh, you can see they're all around the world from a couple in the US. Derek's on the chat as well. Alex is here. We have people all over the world who can get to you in a couple of hours. I think they set that as a standard. We'll answer your email in two hours because we have somebody who's close to your time zone. Uh, and when you're in a pro AV situation, you're trying to figure out the bomb for this job and encoders, decoders, and bandwidth, like somebody just asked. Do I need to figure out the bandwidth for the upstream and downstream as well? All those sort of things. Our team's here to help. So uh, Netgear actually dedicated money, resources to hire people train them on AV. So these are IT people that also know AV, which is a really cool combination. Uh, and the great thing now is they've been in, in practice for almost a year or so, I think. They've seen a lot of different situations. So they have come up against your design probably before and can tweak it and adjust it as needed and help relieve some of those problems. But it's not just the design beforehand. Alex has been on site before when he could go on site. Others have as well as well as answering the phone at you know weekends and Sundays when you're installing the stuff going, what's going on? In fact, these guys often solve other issues that come up on the job site because sometimes you don't quite know. But our guys know enough about all these installations to know that what could be happening, what you're seeing may not be a switch problem, maybe it's an encoder problem, or maybe it is a switch problem, and we'll send you another switch out the next day. So these guys have that kind of uh, um, experience for one thing and have that authority to do that kind of stuff and take care of you throughout the installation. So mm -hmm. that's our design engineering services team. And that's easy to reach too. It's an email, proavdesign at netgear.com. No fun number to remember, proavdesign at netgear, and somebody will answer your question very soon. 
What which goes that? all of us. It goes to all of the engineers all around the world um, so that we can all be aware of. But uh, we also have an internal ticket system that's tied to that uh, email. Um, so the ticket can be reviewed uh, uh, internally if needed. Um, I'd also like to say that the engineering services uh, group and team really came together as a, as a result of some of the, of the, uh, the items that we were seeing coming in from the installations uh, that we were working on. Uh, we knew that we needed to, uh, to, to increase our availability um, uh, for the AV world um, because we, we, our support model currently at the time was not as available. So we wanted to change that. And I, I think we've done a pretty good job in the last year, uh, but we're still learning. We're still growing. We're still evaluating and, uh, and adding to uh, this new service. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, so we do have that direct email for um, specifically. So this is design services, installation support. So we did get one uh, comment coming in from, from Daniel. Um, one, thank you for the kind words. Uh, thank you for coming in. Um, but he is asking, is there a way I could get my company to become a partner with Netgear for sales moving forward? I'd say reach out to me if you want. So Jay Henkel, J-H-E-N-K-E-L at netgear.com. I'll set you up with a sales team. Um, I, I'm sure there's a link somewhere on the website. Just email me and we'll work it out for sure. Mm -hmm. If yep. you're not connected on LinkedIn, please do so as well and we can communicate that way. We will definitely get you in the right place. Awesome. Yep. We, do have, we have a great partner program. We have discounts for partners and things like that. So we want to get you involved. Not a problem. And it, we're also, we're enhancing that too. I mean, this is a, the AV over IP is a, is an evolving thing and we, we understand it. So we're, we're making the changes necessary to adapt so that it uh, is, is far more useful. Mm -hmm. Yep. Awesome. Yeah. So Daniel, um, that, that is your cue um, to get in direct contact with, um, with uh, John here on the show. So uh, yeah, you don't got a website, you have a direct contact. So again, you know, that's, is that the equivalent of handing a business card out nowadays? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what business cards are anymore, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, so please get in contact with us. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. Um, <laughs> you did. <laughs> I could flash a QR code. I could get my QR code up, right? And I could do that. Honestly, you could, yeah. we could try that out one day. <laughs> Very We're always funny. trying new things here on the show, uh, especially for the virtual event series. Um, also, one shout out, Jenny. I do love my lights, so thank you. I, uh, the nano leaves are great. So. Um, just wanted to shout you out real quick, um, but cool. Um, so we're almost down to our um, last 10 minutes here. So we talked about engineering services. Um, Daniel, we love to hear it. You know, please get in contact with us. Um, and again, anyone else who is in the chat, uh, please drop your questions in. You got us for another 10 minutes here on today's show. So let's talk about our case study. Can yeah, we do that? let's do it. Let's talk get about Alex it. talking about that because that was a good one. Yeah. I think you have a separate slide on that guy, right? Separate couple of slides on that. In the next slide, yeah. Mm -hmm. So we got Peloton right here, I think, right? Uh, so, yeah, so, you know, back in October, we were we were alerted that uh, uh, through Randy Keener, who's our uh, 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 business developer for strategic accounts, he's, he's been um, one of the most important figures in this transition of neck years to the pro AV, uh, being the world, uh, worldwide leader in pro AV uh, networking. Um, and we, we it was sent to the design team from Randy said well, we needed a bill of material and a system design created uh, for the Peloton head headquarters. Now we worked with the, the uh, end uh, integrator before um, and, and we kind of knew like a little bit of what they wanted. Um, so I, I went ahead and started working on the design. My, my goal was to keep, they, they love the M4396 X. So I went ahead and went, went right into the, to that with the design. If you want to go to the next slide there, um, and uh, they do like the, the stack in the center, um, the two uh, M4300s with the blue links. They like the 40 gig stack there. And then they, uh, this is actually, believe it or not, this isn't actually the final design. It actually grew significantly from this. Um, they added a whole nother wing of, uh, of uh, one gig switches as well. Um, and then uh, removed the seller switch and added a fourth floor. So um, it, 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 it kind of evolved, but as they came up with things that they needed, they, they worked with us uh, directly. Um, and that's the type of relationship that we build with the Pro-AV design team as we get in there. We know what you guys are looking to do. We, we can customize the design. We can change it. Um, we can evaluate it. Um, and this one's going in right now. So far, it's been fantastic all the way through. Um, and, uh, and we're really proud of, of uh, this design and this installation. 
So talk about the different connections that you have. We got 40G linked yeah. aggregate stacking and the 1G links. Yeah, so the core is a, is all 40 gig stack. Now it has some uh, some um, extra uh, fiber now, not copper, but extra fiber card uh, in there for each uh, stack uh, or each part of the stack. And then each purple link is a bonded uh, 80 gig link aggregate connection coming back to the core. Um, so that you can literally fire off video from any any device to the core and and out to any other device. Alex, do you know if they redid their whole um, infrastructure? Is this a new build or adapting to an existing one? This is a this is a new build. Uh, the building over the last six months has been uh, being put together. Um, the, the new floors essentially. Uh, the building was already there, uh, but they completely gutted the buildings and set it all back up. Uh, and then the the core and and the edge floor unit IDF units are all kind of stacked together. So um, the forty gig links aren't that long. They're they're uh, the MMF fiber multi-mode fiber and what are they using uh, for all this video going around like 87 input on the eighth floor i mean that's just crazy they've got video walls they have conference rooms uh they have several uh you know pelotons like a workout gym so they have like the the workout gym type thing going on with several screens going to each bike uh so yeah I bet they have an awesome gym at that building. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's going through. It, it, it's pretty much an AV mecca, if you will. Um, so cool. Yeah. We were hoping to get some pictures of this stuff, you know, but we haven't been able to get that for you. It sounds amazing, and I'd love mm -hmm. to see. Yeah. It. Once sure. it's fully, once it's fully in, we, I think they'll be able to to do some stuff for us. And these, are, as you can tell, if you know AV over IP by the model numbers, NVX. Got a little poll going out there. Who makes NVX? Anybody? Crestron. I knew that. You knew that, Alex. I did. I was but, uh, so we work uh, with all vendors again. Crestron, of course, is entrenched in a lot of different places around the world. And everybody looks to them for who's recommended and we're a recommended switch for them and work really well. So that worked out awesomely. Cool. Awesome. Yeah, and it's it, like I say, the 96X is, is a powerful switch, but it, it's so flexible that you just can't get away uh, from the, uh, the, the incredible capability it has. Um, to, to adapt to any environment, any network, um, and it's fully on display in this one. And you can see by the pictures, those are real pictures, right? No, that's yeah. a real embodiment. Of, so you can see some blank panels in some of those. Yeah, and yeah. If you yeah. expand the future, pull the panel off, plug a switch in, plug another card in, you're good to go. Exactly. And they and they did in a lot of cases, like I say, this wasn't the exact final drawing. They added some sections to it. Um, but uh, but the, that final drawing is really big. And, uh, and so... Uh, this is this captures the essence of what we put together. It still has the same amount of endpoints. Um, so yeah, cool, nice. That's great. Thank you for that. That's a no. good one. This is a good example. Um, you know, we actually got a couple of comments coming in uh, while we're going over this um, this case study. So one long is asking, is this specific case study uh, available online? So not yet. We are, we're trying to. It's always difficult trying to secure the rights and everything. As Alex said, it isn't quite finalized. They usually need to be finalized and everything buttoned up before they'll sign off and that stuff. But um, it's certainly one we're looking at in marketing, absolutely. So unfortunately, you, can't, you won't see that yet on our website. Mm -hmm. But the moment it is, we'll let you know. I think um, we'll probably you know, be able to figure out how to get some of these case studies out. I think this is something that, one, with Peloton, you got at-home workouts, you got, you know, we, we talk about distance learning, you know, this is stuff that changes, you know, pretty quickly over the next few weeks. So, you know, hopefully this is something to get out to you guys um, pretty soon. So we're actually down to our last five minutes. So I hope that didn't go too quick for you guys. I uh, hope that there's still enough time to kind of uh, make sure that you have enough time to wrap things up. We do have a couple questions just so I could address it before um, we're off. So we got, uh, we got one from Kurt. He's asking, what about having a co-hosted Netgear and ZB virtual event? I would like to learn about the ability to set up an ad hoc or controller list, small AV network, how to bring a ZB controller to the M forty three on uh, to the M forty three hundred and so on, um, yeah, it's got some specific questions for us. So, it my mind basically. So we've been talking about that actually in the last week, maybe two weeks ago, but uh, talking with like Bob Michaels, the CEO of ZV, and getting Laurent Massia involved as well, so we could talk about that partnership, but also how our products work together and what might be right. Um, I know from LinkedIn where I follow ZV, uh, they have a lot of webinars on their own, so you can certainly find that but we have and are talking about something together coming up. So hopefully in the next few weeks or month, we can get that together. Good idea, thanks. Awesome, thank you. So stay tuned. 
Um, and I think um, he's, uh, he's going to get in contact, actually, I think, with Derek. So um, I think we'll be able to continue the conversation, I think, as we start kind of um, bringing things yeah. along. Eric has a great uh, uh, video. Um, it, we, we call it the legendary video <laughs> um, that is out there of, of how to set up utilizing the uh, ZV Maestro software and uh, and a video wall. Um, and uh, it's uh, probably our, I don't know, John, you might have the stats, but it, it might be the most watched uh, AV video we have. It's up there, man. You search the YouTube channel and you'll see uh, how to set up a video wall, I think is the title or something mm -hmm. like that. You That's something to that, yeah. yeah. A legendary video, awesome. Yeah, this is good stuff. I think this is something that uh, people want to uh, people want to see. I think we also got a shout out from Jenny. Is that um, she's uh, she seconds uh, seeing a co-hosted event with ZV. So, hey, cool. you know we'd love to hear these ideas. You know we want to make sure that you guys are getting the resources, but the content that you guys need to um, also succeed in your areas as well. So we got couple minutes left a couple minutes left we got one more question in and i think you know, we're going to start kind of wrapping things up here but one more from the cat he's asking what is the support level for different compression standards yeah again kind of go ahead alex you can probably take it just gonna say we, we for different compression standards you know we we remain a compression agnostic um because the feed is actually encoded uh into ether uh, uh ethernet um, you know, one 10 gig base T or one one uh, one gig base T, um, and uh, and so the compression is really on the encoder, um, and they and they you know whatever they support, we're we're going to obviously transmit uh, uh, agnostically. Um, we've we've worked with uh, every you know everyone from the JPEG 2000s uh, to the SDVOE very light, very very concise um uh, uh compression level so it, it really doesn't matter as far as the as far as av over ip goes um now as far as, there are some things that i've heard from the the uh, like the webex and uh, zoom you know zoom has their like their platform where you can install it on a on a, basically any kind of linux box or any windows box and run their run their uh, compression uh, stuff so that you you know it, it sends out all of those those feeds to the different uh, to the different thing, but it comes back to a, a centralized server. Um, you know that 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 kind of stuff. Get, you know, it depends on uh, what what you're looking for. But that's not multicast. That's not IGMP based. That's usually uh, unicast. Um, but yeah, so that there is some stuff to evaluate there from, especially the WebEx platform that the, they call it a codec. Um, you know, the, the WebEx has like a, a, a Cisco codec that, uh, that does its own compression. Um, uh, but, uh, they say, they say it has a multicast capable from these certain cameras. I, I, I've yet to, uh, get my hands on it to see the technology directly, but, um, that's, that's been, uh, uh, uh of concern, I think for, for, uh, AV over app, uh, or AV over IP applications. Mm -hmm. And I was looking for some notes real quick. I had, cause I had some other lists somewhere, a different slide deck. But um, yeah, whether it's 264, H264, H265, um, VC2, I know, was uh, the codec that uh, Atlanta used, which is awesome, even for one gig. Those are all one gig. And then JPEG 2000, you mentioned as well. But in two picks, uh, the Pure 3 and SDVOE, there's the 10 gig. It doesn't matter to us at all. It doesn't as as matter. It's, in, it's encoded in, into UDP traffic. And uh, we transmit it, uh, you know, based off. The one thing that does happen is is uh, that I think it's different with us is is we're better to uh, encode or for IGMP snooping, where it's better for on the VLAN. Uh, and some some switch vendors they they like it to be on the interface, um, but we prefer it on the VLAN. Um, I know we we do a lot better job that way. Cool, cool, awesome. Um, so we're actually we just hit our one p.m. mark. Um, so that hour did go quick. Uh, the one thing I do want to ask uh, everyone in the chat, if this is something you found enjoyable, this is something you found helpful, um, just flip a like onto the, uh, onto the stream. This is going to help us get into one more of our subscribers' uh, watch pages, but um, it's going to help us just bring more awareness and then really just kind of continue doing it on the show because, um, you know, I think this is something that, uh, well, one, I love doing. I hope you guys enjoyed being on the show, but um, we want to hear from Absolutely. you guys. So drop that like. Um, we got one more question, but I don't know if there's something that you guys want to kind of um, kind of wrap things up here, either on the uh, the Peloton side or really talking about anywhere um, hardware feature sets with the M4300 and M4500. I think for me, I just want to make sure people know where to get resources. And we talked about that earlier. The best way is to go to netgear.com slash pro AV. It's really easy. 
Um, I crafted that page, you know, in the last few months or so and adding more and more all the time. So that's going to give you some access to some of the resources, the product information, the engineering services department, how to access them. Uh, we have all kinds of information there. That's the best place to go for that, for sure. Excellent. Um, there is one more question that uh, I think we could answer for Jaime. Um, he's asking, can you share a contact at ZV to talk about their encoders slash decoders? Um, I, I, I don't know if I can publicly give you a contact there. I'd say to go to ZV's website or LinkedIn page and you can contact them there for sure. Um, they have several different products to choose from. So I'm just going to send you back to their way specifically because all the products, all the AV over IP products work really well with us. So it's easy on that side of it. Mm -hmm. And they're the, they've got that HDMI encoder card, which is uh, truly a fantastic integration between the network world and the AV world. So, yep, that's a cool thing. Yep. Excellent. Um, so just one more time, the page is netgear.com slash pro AV. Uh, we did get a couple folks in the comments ask for resources, you know, hopefully if there's something that uh, hopefully you're able to find a lot what you could uh, what you're looking to find here. Um, but if not, you know, again, get in contact with us. Uh, we're on uh, community.necker.com. You could get in contact with us there. Um, there's, uh, you know, we floated that email if you're looking to um, for advice on your next deployment um, for Pro AV. Uh, what was that email again? Just so we could get it one more Pro time. AV design. Pro AV Design. I think it's down here. Pro AV Design at netgear.com. Um, but yeah, I mean, um, that's kind of all I got from my side. Uh, is there anything else you guys wanted to say? Just any final words? Alex? Uh, no, the, just uh, thank you for having me, Angelo. Uh, it's, uh, this is awesome. I look forward to coming back, sharing some more successes. And, uh, and hopefully uh, once we get this COVID thing uh, out of the way, we can... Uh, we can all have uh, a, a, a big rally together. <laughs> I'll be looking forward to that. <laughs> awesome. Uh, well, thank you, everyone in the chat, everyone who's watching this even after the event. Um, uh, this is the Necker Virtual Event Series. This is something we do every Tuesday at 12 p.m. Pacific time to 1 p.m. Pacific time. If you need any help whatsoever with your Necker setup or you were trying to kill a dead spot or you're looking for your next upgrade, we also do something called Tech Support Live every Friday, 12 p.m. to 2 p.m. Pacific time. So that's a two hour show. You have us um, and uh, as support experts, Alex, I think we're gonna talk a little bit later on kind of how we could uh, you know, start expanding that out because again, I think, uh, I hope that you guys are enjoying these shows and we're just gonna keep on doing bigger and better things as we um, continue to become, um, I guess, better at this. So uh, yeah, I, I really hope you guys enjoyed it. Absolutely, nice job, Angelo. You're an awesome host. Thank you for leading us around, keeping us on track. Awesome. Well, uh, until uh, until next time, I think we got Wi-Fi 6 for business, actually, for next Tuesday's event. That's something we haven't even talked about yet, so just stay tuned. That's a next Tuesday event. But, um, yeah, awesome. So thank you, everyone, for uh, coming into the chat, and we'll see you guys next time. Thanks, everybody. Take care.